it's been 2014 for a long time now and I have returned with oh shit another box. But don't worry, it's already been opened. So what you're looking at is what I received. A lot of blue, sticky tape, plastic, bubble wrap and... Yeah! On closer inspection you can see exactly what I described. But let me show you more. That was easy. Uh, power supply, Sega Mega Drive, Model 1, also worked with Mega CD Model 1 and Model 2, and the Master System Model 1. Right, cast that aside. Uh, Honeybee SG6 controller. Already have one of those, but in not very good shape. And the quick shot for professional players only controller with uh, you know October fire on one and two okay this is obviously a master system exclusive controller oh, I say exclusive I mean you know it's supposed to work on the master system they did release something like that for the NES as well now let's get on to the blue bit Ugh. Mega Drive 2 in absolutely devastating shape. That that that's I don't like that. I'll be cleaning that up. That will be fun. Now the other blue bit. Let's take it out of the box. Mega Drive Model 1. Not in as bad shape. Now you're probably wondering why the hell I got these. Because you already know that I have Model 1 and Model 2, so you make it right. Well, there is a reason. One, they were pretty cheap, and I'm hoping that if I clean them up, I can resell them and make a profit. Reason number two, the power supply. So, now I can finally run my Mega Drive Model 1 with the Mega CD 2. I just don't like to use it with the Mega Drive 2, because I don't like just using the composite video out. I'd rather use the SCART. As far as the cleaning goes, I'm going to start with the Model 1 here because, well, I want to save the more fun bit to last. That being said, I'll be back in a bit. You know, on the inside, it actually doesn't look too bad. Not bad at all. Now, as you can see, it already looks about a million times better than it did. It's certainly going to get better. After I put it back together, I'll clean it up a bit more. This is probably my favorite bit. Ha! Bit! Get it? Ha! Uh... Now if any of you are interested, it is the IC BDM5 PAL model Mega Drive. And that with the Yamaha YM2612 chip. And now as you can see, the bottom section looks done and is also a million times better than it was. I'm just going to put these together then polish it up a little bit. Now as you can see, after a bit of a polish up, it looks quite amazing. And you've got a 
take into consideration this particular one that is almost 23 years old. Because it says on the board that this is a 1991. So yeah, I'm rather happy with this result. Now, onto the Mega Drive 2. Here we go again. Once again, I'll be back in a bit. Or should I say, 16 bit. Now the top half is done, and, well, drastic difference. And you can see in the background there's the board and shielding. So yeah, here's the board and shielding. Ignore the glare, that probably melted your eyes. Um, this is... Okay, focus. PC BD MD2 VA1.8 PAL from the 13th of October 1995. And now the bottom half, which is in even better shape as well. So now I'll be putting it all back together, and then I'll polish it up a bit more. Now everyone, doesn't that look like millions and millions of times better than what it was. Holy moly. I have never said holy moly before in my life. But we still don't know if this thing works. I have my trusty Mega Drive 2 power adapter. We'll plug that in to the back of the Mega Drive. Excuse me. Ah, no. Yeah, you know. Well, Yay! Wait, that's better. And now to see if the Model One works. So I get the power supply into the back once again. By the way, this is one of the much later models. You can tell because it doesn't say uh, what it usually says on the earlier ones. And it's missing two of the ports, the channel switch and the external port. Like I said in a previous video, they omitted it because it wasn't really used. Now, I'll plug this end into here. And, moment of truth. Yay! I can't see that properly. It's not like I expected them not to be working anyway. These things are really, really hard to break. You'd have to drop, like, a car on them or something. But even then, you might be lucky they still might work. So now I have it hooked up to my TV using a SCART component uh, adapter so I can get the best video quality out of it that I possibly can. Yes, that's definitely working. Yep, that is a definite work. Now, some time has gone by, and within that time, I managed to clean up these two controllers. As you can see, they also look a lot better than what they did. I'm saying that a lot in this video, sorry, anyway, yeah, this one especially looks a lot better, did I just say better? 
like before in all the D pads there was all kinds of junk in there, dirt, the dust, grime, whatever, you know, things stuck in the button accents and all kinds of things. And within that time I managed to get the Mega Drive 2 set up and that works fine as well. By the way, the controls work. Yes, they do. That's good. As for cosmetic damage, I managed to fix up that torn bit in the cable where the wire was sticking out. Because frayed cables are wrong. Very wrong. Well, that's all I have time for today, but as always, I'll be back in 16 bits. Wow, I really, really like that. I'm going to use that every time now. And you can see in the background there's the board and shielding. Why did it sound so surprised when I when you found out I wasn't sick? I just like to find things out. I would have told you. you. Know? Not Why? I thought you didn't trust me with that stuff. And yes, you just caught me in the middle of filming something. Oh. Yeah. Well, um, delete this. Outtakes. No, delete, no, because of what okay, I said. Okay, I promise. Yeah. So yeah, here's the board and shielding.